Hey Calvary, my name is Robert Smith. Thanks for tuning in this morning for your word for the day. We're continuing the start of going through the book of Mark, and I was excited Pastor Joe selected Mark for our next study, and I love the book of Mark. I always have. I mean, I love all the Gospels. It'd be weird for me to say that I didn't like a book of the Bible, but I always find myself going back to the book of Mark, and I think it's because it's so direct, it's to the point, uh, it's the shortest of the Gospels, and it's just so just simple and to the point of who Jesus is, what he taught, what we need to believe. And, and, and I even see that in the beginning. Here in chapter 1, he doesn't start with the genealogy of Jesus saying who his great ancestors were. He didn't talk about even Jesus' birth and all the backstory and, you know, Jesus' uh, mother meeting, you know, Jesus' cousin and all. It just doesn't get into any of that. It just goes straight to the point of John the Baptist introducing him as this forerunner for the gospel, then Jesus being baptized and going into the wilderness to pray and fast and then be tempted to start ministry. And it just launches straight in because Mark's like, hey, I don't have a lot of time. Let's get to the point. Um, and maybe you've got a friend like that. They're a little annoying sometimes, but other times you're like, yeah, let's just get straight to the point. And that's exactly what is happening here. I'm, I'm going to read just two short verses that have a real big impact, as it is in much of Mark. Just a few verses tells us so much. And verses 14 and 15 of chapter 1 say this. It says, Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God, saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. What's going on here? Well, for 30 years, we had been waiting for Jesus to start this. See, we, you know, and we look at, you know, the book of Luke, we see the great Christmas story of, you know, sweet little newborn baby Jesus in the manger and all this. And then we kind of just arrive to him being in ministry. But there's a 30 year gap there of Jesus working as a carpenter and learning what it is to live on earth and growing in wisdom and stature and favor with men and all this growth and development and waiting. There'd be 30 years of waiting of, is this the Messiah? We heard that it was, but he's just building another table with dad out in the workshop. But then there's also the thousands of years of waiting for the prophecies to be fulfilled. The prophecies of the Old Testament, that there would be a Messiah, there would be a Savior that would come and redeem and save God's people. See, for there, hundreds of years, we heard this in, intentionally in the Old Testament, but it actually been since the beginning of time. You go back to the third chapter of Genesis in the very beginning as God is, is talking to Adam and Eve after their sin, he alludes to a coming Savior that would save them from their sin. So there'd been waiting, thousands of years of waiting, what seemed like an endless period of waiting. People had been waiting for a Savior. They were in a waiting period, a holding pattern. Sound familiar? <laughs> At times in 2020, it felt, it's felt like we are in a, you know, endless, timeless period of waiting. And yet, for the Jewish people, it was even greater than this. And here's Jesus. He comes along and he says, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is here. He's like, hey guys, it has begun. The Messiah is here. The kingdom of God is at hand. Let's go. This is, you know, green flag, race is on, let's get after it. But yet there's still some that are wondering, hey, is, is, this, is Jesus really it? Is this really what's going on? In fact, in a, a rather striking reality, you look at uh, both Matthew and Luke, there's a story of John at, in prison after he'd been arrested, he's in prison, and he sends some of, of his followers to go and ask Jesus something really important. Now, remember, John's the one that had baptized Jesus, had kind of launched him into this phase of ministry. And John sends a question to Jesus, and he says, are you the one that's to come, or should we look for another? Even John is like, hey, should we still be waiting? Should we still be looking for that Messiah? See, it's so easy when we're in those periods of waiting to miss what's so obvious in front of us to see God's hand at work right in front of us, and we just get stuck in that period of waiting and longing for next. But Jesus reminds us that the kingdom of God is here. The, the, the time is fulfilled. Let's go, he says. And so what's our action? Well, he says our action is to repent and believe the gospel. Now, 
as, as we look at that, we understand that, that what he's telling us here is that our response is to follow after him. Repent is to turn away from our life of sin and disobedience and turn towards Jesus to say, hey, I am a sinner in need of grace. We need to go follow after the one that saved us. To believe means to believe that Jesus is the Son of God and Savior of the world. To believe that he did, uh, or he was born of a virgin and lived a perfect and sinless life. That he did go to the cross to pay for our sins. That he did rise from the grave three days after being buried. And that, that we have a God to follow, a God to worship, a God to devote our life to. Jesus is saying, repent and believe in me. Follow after me. Turn away from the life that leaves you broken, empty, worthless, and meaningless feeling. And come follow after me. See, the truth is that Jesus is the answer to all the things we're waiting for and longing for. He may not be able to, to educate your kid right now as we long for schools to get back to a sense of normalcy, but know that Jesus is far better than any sense of normal or regular that was in 2019. Jesus is the thing that, that fulfills our longings, our desires, our hopes, our dreams, our aspirations. So don't be like John, stuck in that period of waiting, saying, are you the one that's to come or should we look for another? Realize that Jesus is saying, hey, I'm right here. I am the one that will fulfill your hopes. I am the one that will give you purpose and meaning and fulfillment in life if you will repent from your sins and come follow after me. And also remember that this isn't just what we do at the beginning. But this is something that we do regularly, daily as followers of Jesus, regularly saying, hey, Jesus, I have strayed away here. I need to correct and follow and believe you. Because as we do that, we find that, that the fulfillment of our life is here, that the kingdom of God shows up in our life in powerful ways as we repent and believe the gospel of Jesus. Our hope is that you would do that today and that you would find hope in your period of waiting by looking to Jesus. Hope this has been a help to you. If it is, share it with a friend. Forward this email. Hit the share button on social media. We'll see you tomorrow for tomorrow's word for the day.